This is an RTX 4090 water-cooled in the end case M2. This small form factor case can safely fit these high-end parts and water cooling components all within its 16 liter anodized aluminum frame. We will build this whole system step by step from start to finish right here, right now. This is the Vector Network and let's begin. The end case M2 is flat packed and comes completely disassembled out of the box. The chassis is made out of an anodized aluminum that is thick with a smooth finish and features numerous screw holes throughout for various configurations. The end case M2 features exceptional modularity and this build is using the vertical GPU configuration with the additional vGPU and PCIe cable kit. Let's start the build by connecting the front panel to the motherboard tray with three case screws. Then connect the rear panel with three case screws. The bottom panel is powder coated aluminum and once in place, we can attach the bottom with four case screws. Then secure the four motherboard standoffs to the tray with four case screws. For this build, we're using the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D on AM5. This CPU has its 3 dB cache covering all eight cores and consumes overall less power than the comparable Intel processor. The ROG Strix E650E-I is an ITX motherboard with the required power delivery and VRM thermals for the CPU. To cool the 7800X3D, we have the Watercool Heat Killer 4 Pro CPU Water Block. The upper and cold plate are nickel plated copper and the brackets are polished stainless steel. The mounting materials are installed by hand and work in connection with the stock motherboard back plate. Let's start the build by placing the 7800X3D into the motherboard, followed by four plastic spacers and four metal studs for the CPU block. From here, we'll use the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste. Then place the Heat Killer 4 Pro block right on top, followed by four metal washers and four metal springs and hand screw in the four nuts in a crisscross pattern to apply pressure more evenly. For memory, we're using 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 memory in a 2-stick kit. The low profile of this kit allows for easier tube runs around the CPU block. For storage, we'll install an M.2 NVMe drive. Now for our fittings. These are Optimus 16x10 flex compression fittings in satin black and satin silver. The build is predominantly black, but silver fittings will be used on the CPU water block to complement the nickel plated copper. We'll also use EK Quantum Torque 90 degree adapters in satin titanium and black, Torque Micro 90 degree adapters, and Torque 45 degree adapters. We'll now drop in a pair of Torque 90 degree adapters and Optimus 16x10 compression fittings. This fully loaded motherboard complements the build by balancing the RTX 4090's already high power draw with more efficient power usage. Now we can place the motherboard into the case and attach it with four motherboard screws. To control and monitor the custom loop, we're using the Aqua Computer Quadro, a fan controller with temperature and flow sensor inputs and USB to PC connection. This is a good time to attach the Quadro controller to the case with two screws and hex nuts. Then we can add the top cover and plug in the USB cable into the Quadro and also into the motherboard. For the power supply, we're using the Corsair SF1000L. At 1000 watts, this small form factor PSU will provide steady power to the RTX 4090 and the rest of the system. Next, we'll need the power supply bracket, and we can then attach it to the power supply unit with four power supply screws.
this is a good time to plug in the ATX cable, the PETA cable, the 12 volt high power cable, and the EPS cable. From here, we can drop the unit into the case and secure it with two case screws. This is a good time to plug in the EPS cable, ATX cable, and the Molex cable to the Quadro. And to loop in the power supply inlet cable and plugging it into the PSU, then securing the cable with two case screws. Now it's time for the pump and we're using an Alpha Cool DDC pump unit. This DDC pump has an acetal top and a brass housing with additional cooling fins. We'll attach the brackets to the DDC pump with two screws each. Then drop in a pair of Torx 45 degree adapters and Optimus 16 by 10 compression fittings. Then use a pair of water-cooled heat killer plugs to better match the GPU block. The pump top has two outlet and three inlet ports. The extra ports allow us to actually fill the loop. Now we can attach the pump to the case with a pair of screws, metal washers, and hex nuts. Then connecting the Molex cable for power and the pump cable to the Quadro to control it. For the soft tubing, water cool heat killer EPDM with 16 millimeter outer diameter and 10 millimeter inner diameter will be used in this build for its clean look and high elasticity that allows for tight bending radii. Now it's time to install one of the runs. We'll connect the outlet of the CPU block to the inlet of the DDC pump. Next, we'll attach the vGPU bracket to the PCIe riser cable with two screws, then securing the riser cable to the case with two case screws. Connect the riser cable to the motherboard. Now is a good time to connect the power button cable, USB-A cable, and the USB-C cable from the front of the case. From here, we'll need to remove the GPU lock bar and plate. Then secure the lock bar in a horizontal position with two case screws. For the GPU, we'll use the ROG Strix RTX 4090 with the Heat Killer 5 Ultra Water Block. This combo came away as the winner of our 4090 Water Block Showdown. Link in the description. We'll drop in a pair of Torque Micro 90 degree adapters and Optimus 16x10 compression fittings. Now we can slide the GPU into the riser cable and secure it with two case screws. Then attach the inlet of the GPU block to the outlet of the DDC pump. For cooling, the NCASE M2 can fit radiators as large as 280 millimeters and as thick as this Alpha Cool XT45 full copper radiator at 45 millimeters thick. For airflow, we're using a pair of Noctua NF14A 140 millimeter fans for its exceptional performance with quiet operation. The fan and radiator bracket is made out of powder coated steel. We'll use slim plugs from Barrow for better clearance on the fan and radiator bracket, which goes right on top and is secured with eight radiator screws. The Noctua NF-A14 140mm fans are placed in a push position, exhausting air up and out of the case, and secured with eight 30mm radiator screws. Now drop in a Torx 90 degree and 45 degree adapters and a pair of Optimus 16 by 10 compression fittings with the extra radiator thickness. This cooling unit is expected to perform well in testing. Now is a good time to connect the fan splitter. And before dropping the radiator into the case, let's first connect the tube to the outlet of the GPU block and also to the inlet of the CPU block. Now we can connect the inlet run to the outlet on the radiator. 
and the outlet run to the inlet on the radiator. And securing the radiator to the case with the case screws on each side. And connecting the fan cable to the quadro. The side panels and the top are made of powder coated aluminum. The side panels are curved inward for a tighter fit. There we go. The build is complete. What is left is the fill and testing. What we have here is an RTX 4090 and a 7800X3D fully water cooled in a small form factor ITX 16 liter case with a 1000 watt power supply and a 280 radiator that is 45 millimeters thick. The build looks clean, well fitted, is powerful and expected to run cool and quiet with a small footprint on top of a desk. The fill is next and for liquid we're using distilled water with liquid utopia as a biocide. We'll use an extra inlet port on the pump unit to fill the loop. Now for testing, the AlphaCool XT45 280mm copper radiator is cooled by two Noctua NF-A14 140mm fans. To obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test and Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark were run with the N-Case M2 case completely enclosed with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. We'll first test at 40% fan and pump speeds. With the bill sitting on top of a table, this results in sound levels under 30 30 decibels, which is whisper quiet and at a soft noise level. In 3D Mark Speedway stress test, the GPU core and memory were 58 and 99 degrees Celsius respectively, and the GPU core was 56 degrees Celsius, and the frame rate was 99. Undervolting the RTX 4090 to 0.95 millivolts and adding 200 megahertz to the core, the GPU core and memory each decreased 5 degrees Celsius. The CPU core decreased 3 degrees Celsius, and the frame rate decreased by 2 frames per second. Setting the fan and pump to 100% speed, the GPU core and memory were lower at 49 and 89 degrees Celsius respectively, and the CPU core was also lower at 47 degrees Celsius, and the frame rate was higher at 102 frames per second. Compared to 40% speed, the temperatures are better and the frame rate increased approximately 3%. The decibels increased noticeably to approximately 50, which equates to a moderate noise level. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, at 40% fan and pump speeds, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 40 and 71 degrees Celsius, respectively, and the GPU core was 52 degrees Celsius. GPU power usage was 347 watts and the frame rate was 73. By undervolting the RTX 4090, the GPU core and memory and the CPU core all slightly decreased in temperature. More noticeably, the GPU power usage decreased by 61 watts or approximately 18% and the frame rate only decreased by one frame per second. So there you have it. Step by step, we built an absolute beast of a water-cooled PC all within a small ITX footprint intended to sit on top of a desk as a gaming and productivity machine. The NCASE M2's open chassis and smart design allows for all the water cooling components to actually fit, including a 280mm radiator that is 45mm thick. This is not insignificant as the ROG Strix RTX 4090 generates a high amount of heat from its high power usage. The extra thick radiator with this extra surface area allows for cooler temperatures and more quiet operation. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Thank you and I'll see you at the next episode.